Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to School and Roses. I'm going to take you through a full sort of step-by-step -step on a School and Roses on how to sort of airbrush it. Now the first things that you need to do and what I will do when I come to do my artwork is sort your artwork out. So you will source your artwork either Google or Pinterest is a good one to look for some images. Grab your image and then you've got to get your image across to what you're working on. Now, I'm working on a piece of A3 paper, which has been poly primed, so it's all good to go. There is a video on the channel on how I primed this paper, piece of paper up. I'll leave a link at the end of the video to that specific video if you're interested in sort of priming your own paper to airbrush on. So I'm all set up in the studio, as you can see. We've got the paper that we're working on just here, on the easel and I've got the projector set up so the first thing I'll do is project the image across and then what you do you sort of sit to the side I'll sit on the chair here to the side and you sort of like project it to the side of you and you work in sort of the shadow side and you pencil the outline the more detail you can get penciling across your image the better it will be for you when you come to paint. It gives you more of a reference outline, sort of a grid to work from. Don't worry about going too heavy on your pencil lines because you can erase them back as you're painting. So that's the first sort of process I'll project up across there. Paints we're using today, we've got a mixed bag of paints. We've got some solvent base. We've got a black, a red, a candy red, um, for thinning, I've got thinners for the solvent. We've got some water base, so I'll be using water for thinning and flow improver. We've got some shields here. We've got a graphic we're going to put on as well, so you'll get to see how to put these on. Some shields. TV for reference, so I'll be looking across at the TV screen. This side we've got selection of grayscale paints which we're going to use. I've got a cut mat small cut pieces of masking tape to pin other pieces to this because this is like multiple artwork that's going on this piece of paper we're going to be cutting out some more sort of shields as well with this so what i'll be doing is i'll be projecting the image up and then placing this piece of paper over this one and outlining on that paper to chop it out to make a mask sort of a shield that i can hold up and spray around It'll all come together and you'll see it in the video. But this is the first stage I'll do. I won't put you on a time lapse through this. You basically just project the image up, stand to one side in the shadow, and pencil round, as, as I say, as much as you can get in on this piece now, the better, because these are all like key points that you can follow when you're airbrushed. So I'll see you in the step where we're all set up with the monitor, and then I'll talk you through where we're going to start and what we're going to do. Right guys, we are ready to make a start. Now, as you can see here, I'll just sort of pan you around there. I projected the image up, penciled it out, and now I put another piece of paper over the top of this piece, just a bit of masking tape at the top, just let it fold down, and then follow the outlines that I needed for the picture. Move this piece of paper over to the cut mat, cut it out, and then I've rolled up little pieces of masking tape, sort of backed on itself, and just stuck little squares all the way around just to hold this piece into place because we're going to drop the background in first so the background is going to be all black like you see on the original thumbnail it's all black around the outside and then we can move this shield away and then work on the inside and if any colors go over it's going to hit black and we can always just touch in the black a bit later on so i'm going to use a couple of brushes today the one for the background, I'm going to use the PS2 9 Tech with the fan cap. This is a solvent based black background. So we're just going to do some nice passes along here. Black all this out. We'll remove that and then we can move on to the other brush that we're going to use is my custom infinity. And then we'll start working in the skull and then start doing the roses to sort of follow. So I'll see you in the first time lapse. I'll get a mask on because we're using solvent and put the extractor on. See you in a bit.
Right, we've got the black background down, guys. Now, if you are using solvents, remember to be in a well-vented room and wear a mask because they're not very nice to be breathing that stuff in. So I wore a mask and I had the extractor on. So it was pulling air across. So we've got the background down. That's dried down really nice. So now we can remove the mask and start working on the skull. Now with the skull, on the actual reference, you've got all the textures. And now I'm not following every single texture that is on the screen. I'm gonna make my own textures up. I've lined out places where the main pieces are, but I'm gonna put my own style of textures in to make it look realistic. Because if you try to concentrate on every little pinprick and line that was on the reference, I would probably be here till next week. So I'm gonna do my own style of textures, nice and simple. I'll do a bit on the time lapse and I'll talk you through on how I've got the textures down. So I'll move you over this side and we'll crack on. See you in a bit. Right guys, a little pause, a little talk through. I started off with a value six. And basically to get textures like these just building up. So you're basically, the easiest way to do it is flick your trigger to minimal paint and move your brush around in all random directions. You gotta remember that textures on the skull heads are just complete and utter random. So you don't follow a consistent pattern all the way through, all the way through. Just move your brush around all different angles, different trigger distances, and back off distances from the paper, and you'll get different effects with your paint that hits the paper. So when you go up close, you can get some real small dots, move back and just puff the paint in. So I work around in the five, then work around in the six, then I've dropped some shading grey in and then I've dropped some black in here just to bring these, these out. And now I can just keep working these textures going over and over and over. Knocking it back with an eraser, getting some real sharp ones with a scalpel to pop the highlights out and some little cracks and little creases. You can just scalpel out little bits like that and you just got to keep working at it working at it just building the layers up it does take some time to do realistic schools you just got to keep building it up putting more in taking away putting more in taking away and just keep over layering your textures and just putting your shadows and shapes in so we're about we've got this piece here and this piece to continue on with and then the rest of this is the roses that are going to come round so I'll just keep pressing on with the textures, drop me in some more time lapses, and we'll move on. See you in a bit. Right guys, a little talk through, I've sort of gone steaming ahead in the time lapses. Now, textures again, I'm gonna leave this one as it is here, 
I'm going to start working the roses in and I can always come back to add more textures and do a few more tones because I want to get these bright colours in now and it'll just bring them forward and it'll set the school back because I'm looking at a lot of white here in these patches. So I'm just going to start dropping these in and then we can do some more highlights and textures in here. Now textures and things that I were using, I was using a piece of cardboard. Now if you want to get like a nice organic edge, rip the cardboard like that and you get that sort of uneven sort of natural edge instead of being a straight line and sort of went around the edges with that. Textures I was going, like I say, minimal trigger and just flicking the trigger and moving and bouncing around with the brush and just doing random pattern, dot patterns and just moving around. Then going with the blacks. Same with the eraser, just sort of like touching in. Because this is golden, it's not really knocking much of it back. You're getting little bits. So you're just randomly moving, popping little highlights out with the eraser. Like that. You can go in with the scalpel as well. So if you've got any like little tiny little bits like that, you can make them look like the, the holes have got little holes in. And just pop some little bits out like that. Another one you can do to get speckles down, get yourself a toothbrush, cotton bud, dip your cotton bud in some paint, just put it across the bristles of the toothbrush and then just flick the toothbrush like that at your work and then you'll get your speckles down. You can do that with black and white and that'll bring your dot highlights out quicker on them passes there. You can get different organic type shields which are good, I don't own any of them. Mm -hmm. But you can get the little skin texture ones that are really good for doing realistic schools because you can just lay it down and drop your colours on you can mix your tones up with the organic shields. So that's where I'm going as far with this piece here. We're going to move on to the roses, drop these in, so these will be nice and bright. This is going to be like a solvent red, so we're going to get these roses in. And then I can do shadows in here where the roses stand out. Little shadows about. You've got a little bit of green coming down from the actual like stalk part of the rose coming through the school there. So I'll stick you in with the time lapse and we'll crack on. See you in a bit.
that's why right. some long time lapses. We've got the roses in. Now, how I did the roses, you see me just sort of buzz around and throw the colour in. And that's what I did, is just chuck the colour straight in. Wasn't using a shield at the start, just put the colour in on the first pass of red. Then I mixed a little bit of black into the red and make a, made a darker tone. And then sort of went in with a darker tone. And then went in with a black and just held the shield and work. you see me working around with the shield just sharpen up the edges and then I've gone in with a little bit of like scratch back on the tops and you just pop out some of the little highlights on the tops of the roses and that just makes the petals just sort of stand out a bit just gives it that little bright highlight at the top and just pops them out. So we're going to move on to the next piece, which is just here. I'll take this piece of masking off and then we'll start working the next piece in. So I'll see you in a bit. We are finished. I don't know how much I caught in that length of time lapse, but the idea of this picture is to show where you start in airbrushing as like a beginner's rose. We all sort of start here, and as we progress, we move on and we get better as we go along in the piece of artwork with the roses. So it's like a beginner's piece flipped over underneath. That's the gist of it. Drop my logo here with a stencil. We've masked out this piece. And just on a bit of soft shading here to give it that rolled over look so as though you're turning the page we've got the black background on this with the realistic school and the roses and it's all done the next stage on this will be to i'm going to clear coat this but i'm going to mask out this piece and do this in matte clear and then this piece will be done in gloss so you'll have a nice shiny piece here and then underneath where this is folded over will be a matte finish on that. So I hope you've got something out of the video along the way and learned some bits. Just sort of, if you want to do textures, just do little squiggles, random. You've got to do it as random as you can when it comes to sort of like realistic schools. Try not to get overwhelmed by the pitch because there's that many textures in it it can really throw you if you're trying to concentrate and do every little dot, line, shadow on a school's real estate. It's just ridiculous. So just blast it in, knock your paint away, flip your paint on, just do different tones and get like a random sort of texture like that. So thanks for watching. Don't forget if you're new to the channel, click that subscribe, press that notification, drop your comments, tell me what your thoughts are on the piece and I'll see you in the next one guys. Thanks for watching. Cheers.